Hi, Gerard here. Welcome to Learn Delphi. In this video, we will continue with this math quiz project we started last time. If you want to start with us, you can download the starter project files from patreon.com slash learndelphi. The link is in the description box below this video. You will also find the link to download Delphi 10.3 Community Edition for free. We are busy exploring mathematical operators, procedures and functions in Delphi. We already set up the behaviors of the visual components of our math quiz application. So far we learned how to increment and decrement a number. We use Delphi's ink procedure to increment a number. Now we must add code so our application gives the user 10 simple random math questions. This label shows a header when the application starts up. This panel will display your score, initially it will be blank. And this panel must display the math question, initially it will also be blank. The spin edit is set to 0 and it is disabled. And we also have a panel here that will only be visible after you answer 10 questions. Then it will give you a final assessment. This panel gives you some additional information, like how to submit your answer. The button's caption is start when you run the project. You must click the button to start the quiz. When you click start, the button's caption changes to next. This label displays the question number and the score starts at zero. That is the part we programmed last time. When we finish the project today, this panel must display the random math question. For now, our math questions will only give easy random additions, with numbers from 1 to 10, so we will only handle code for the plus operator. After we learn how to randomize an array in a future lesson, we will revisit this project. Then we can also include random subtractions and multiplications. After you answer the question in the spin edit, you must press the tab key to move focus away from the spin edit, so that your answer can be assessed. If your answer is correct, this panel displays correct, and this panel gives you 10 points for the correct answer. The spin edit is disabled again, and the button has focus. So you can just press enter or click the button for the next random question. Now the next random question displays. The spin edit is enabled and it has focus, and the question number is incremented. Your score also incremented with 10 points, and this panel tells you to press tab to submit your answer. If your answer is incorrect, the score must stay the same. This panel must then tell you what the correct answer is. The user can't cheat after seeing the correct answer because the spin edit will always be disabled after answering the math question. After answering 10 questions, a message box must pop up to stop you and to notify you that you can play again if you want to try again. The button's caption changed to play again. This panel that was initially invisible displays a final assessment. It displays in green if you passed with more than 70%. If you play again, the question number starts at 1 again and the score is back to 0. The panel that displays the final assessment is invisible again and everything is like it was the first time. If you answered another 10 questions and your score is below 70%, the message box pops up again. This panel displays again and shows that you failed because your score was too low. So if you want to start with me, pause the video here and go download the starter project files from patreon.com slash landelphi. If you downloaded the starter project files, open it in Delphi. Now follow what I'm doing and write the code with me. Last time we did the project step by step and we added comments in our code to describe what the code is doing. You can read the comments and try to figure it out or you can watch the previous videos to get up to date. We will do it step by step again and we will add comments so you can come back to the code later. Double click the button. Here we already have a few lines of code. All our variables must be accessible in more than one event handler, so we already declared some of them here under the implementation clause. We will need a few more variables that must be accessible in more than one event handler, so we will add them here under implementation. We already have an integer that must keep track of the question number, and another integer that keeps track of the user's score, and an integer variable for the user's answer. We also have a char for the mathematical operator. We will only do additions for now, so the char will be a plus sign. Later it will also store other random arithmetic operators like minus and multiply. We need more variables for random numbers. Put your cursor here and type int left operand, comma, int right operand, 
as integer. I mentioned before that byte variables will be suitable for all these numbers because they are lower than 255, but I made them integers so that you can play with bigger numbers later. int left operand will be used to show a random number in front of the plus sign. int right operand will be for the random number after the plus sign. Go under the last code in the event handler that handles the buttons on click event. Make a new line and type this comment. Get random left operand. Press enter and type int left operand colon equals 1 plus random. After random type a 10 between brackets. Random is a default function that can do a lot of stuff. You can use it to randomize numbers, colors, indexes of arrays and so on. The number between brackets is not required. If you leave this parameter out, the random function will find the random value between 0 and 1. Including 0 but excluding 1. In other words, a floating point number. If you do pass a number, like the number 10 in our code, the random function returns a random number up to, but not including 10. So our code will return random numbers from 0 to 9. We want to get random numbers from 1 to 10, so excluding 0 but including 10. So we just plus 1 to the random number returned by the function. But there is a catch. A computer's processor can't just pick something out of thin air. It must use a predefined algorithm to do its work. So the processor needs a starting point or a seed to know where to start picking random numbers. So sometimes it may look like the randomization becomes repetitive. That is because of the predefined algorithm that may use the same starting point or seed to pick a random number. Let me use my favorite nutty professor, Albert Einstein's formula to explain the point. If we look at the formula E equals mc square, the value of E may be different every time we give different values to m and c, but it will always be the same if m and c is always the same. So if the random function uses a bunch of predefined numbers to start an algorithm, it may sometimes repeat the same numbers and therefore yield the same result. To avoid this problem, Delphi also provides the randomized procedure that we can use in conjunction with the random function. The randomized procedure uses the time of the day as the starting point. The time of the day changes every millisecond, so the seat will be unique and your numbers will therefore be more random. So let's go back to our code and add the randomized procedure. Make a new line above this comment and type another comment. Reposition the seed of the randomizer. Press enter and type randomize. Now make a new line under this statement and type another comment. Get random right operand. Press enter and type int right operand colon equals 1 plus random and 10 between brackets. This is the same as the code for the left operand we typed earlier. We first get a random number from 0 to 9 and we plus 1 to the result to exclude 0 and to include 10. Then we assign the result to int right operand. That will be the number on the right side of the operator. Notice we only call the randomized procedure once in our code. You don't have to call it every time you use the random function. Also notice the result is assigned to a variable, so random is a function and not a procedure, like the ink and deck procedures we explored last time. If you are not familiar with the difference between functions and procedures, go back to unit 10.8 and watch that video. Make a new line and type this comment. On the next line type chr operator colon equals plus between quotes. Later we can also test it with other operators. Now we have two random operands and the operator in three different variables. So let's build up our math question and display it in a panel. Go to the next line and type this comment. Display quiz. Press enter and type this statement. Here we take the random number in int left operand and convert it to a string. Then we concatenate it with the ASCII number 32, in other words a space. Then we concatenate that with the plus sign in chr operator. After that we concatenate another space. And then we also concatenate the random number in int right operand, after also converting it to a string. The whole lot is then assigned to the caption of PNL math quiz. Let's see how it looks. Run the project. Click Start. This panel shows the random math question. 
Click the button again and again. That looks perfect. Close the form. Go back to the statement where we assign the plus to CHR operator. Change the plus to a minus. Run the project. Click the button. Look at the random question. It gives us a subtraction now. Close the form. Change the minus to an X. Run the project. Click start. Now we get multiplications. Close the form. Change the operator back to plus. As mentioned earlier, when we do a raise in a future lesson, we will also randomize the operators. You can now go and play with bigger random numbers and see if you can finish the rest of the project. Check the demo at the beginning of this video to see how it works. Save this project. Next time we will continue with mathematical procedures, functions, operators and expressions. We will finish this project. If you had fun, leave a comment under this video. And if you learned something, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! See you next time! Thank you.